and we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. And we're just going to give a, a little update on some of the games that happened from last night, talk about the upsets, and see what the teams should be looking forward to going into the postseason, going into the regular season after All-Star break, um, as well as what direction they should take this team or their team given these upsets. So first, let's start with the big upset that happened last night, which was the Bucks losing again to um, this time to the Phoenix Suns. So this time they lost to a relatively competent team. But again, I just find it ridiculously hilarious how Doc Rivers has lost yet again. It's unbelievable how they just can't win a game with him at all. And it's unbelievable how he was actually selected to be the All-Stars head coach with just one win under his belt. There was a stat that came up, up after the game that said the last time that the Bucks lost on a Tuesday was when COVID kept the fans out of the arena. So that is such a long time ago. And it's unbelievable to me how quickly this team just got worse once Doc Rivers got here. It's like... Only under Doc Rivers would they break this, would they um, end this streak. Only under him. And Giannis had a great game. Uh, Dame didn't play this season. Chris Middleton went out um, late in the game. So they didn't, have two, uh, they didn't have two of their best players. So that, might play, that definitely plays into um, them losing to Phoenix. But this is where the Bucks need to hit the panic button. They have to, abs- they need to figure it out right now. Doc Rivers has to figure it out with this team. Same with um, Giannis. Same with the uh, Dame. Dame didn't play this game, but so far recently he hasn't been playing well whatsoever for um, the Bucks. And they need to figure it out really quickly. They need to figure it out like now, because come playoff time, like Doc Rivers is already going is already blowing leads to a bunch of teams that they shouldn't be losing to. So going into the playoffs. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to get worse at this rate. Like, if you paid attention to the podcast that, um, to my last podcast, I talked about Doc Rivers for a very long time and his coaching experience. We all know it's been full of disappointment. What's, it's been full of disappointment, and I don't want to jump the gun as of right now because it's still like the regular season and like All Star break hasn't even like, popped up yet so they still have time so maybe i'm being a little bit too harsh but given that it's doc rivers the adjustments need to happen now because they won't happen in the playoffs i can guarantee you the adjustments won't happen in the playoffs they have to figure out their offensive game plan now they need to be consistent now because if they just don't hit the shots doc rivers isn't going to do anything to help them because he doesn't that's just what he does. You can check out my last episode and my last podcast where I further go into um, Doc Rivers and his problems with being the head coach for several different teams that are competent enough to win it all. So you can go ahead and watch that. Uh, but the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to talk about Phoenix. They had way too many scores for the Bucks to keep up with them. Middleton didn't show up in this game, as I mentioned before, and he didn't give Giannis the help that he needed. The big three in Phoenix didn't score less than 25 points. Booker led the way with um, 32 points. Kevin Durant uh, ended the game with 28. And Bradley Beal ended the game with 25. Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal also were able to snag 10 rebounds. So, obviously, this team has a lot of scores. Because they're scoring, they don't necessarily need to have defense in the regular season. But coming playoffs, when the playoffs roll around... Their defense definitely definitely needs to be a strong point and something that they should work on. So because it like because their offense isn't necessarily while it's consistent and while their players are definitely consistent, it's not always guaranteed that you will have the best night. So you need to have something to fall back on, and that is the defense. So that's what I have to say about Phoenix and their lineups. Obviously, what they're doing in the regular season is all right. They could be a lot better. But again, have to see this in the playoffs. Same thing applies for the Clippers. Have to see all of it in the playoffs. But as of right now, they're they're on a pretty good road. I see them finishing in like the sixth seed, maybe the seventh seed, depending on um the the teams that they play and like who they lose to. But so far, it's it's not that bad for the Suns. But the Bucks, on the other hand, even though they're like 
third and fourth, like they're they're bouncing between um, third and fourth because of how top heavy this Eastern Conference is. Um, they definitely need to step up, and the adjustments need to happen now because if they can't get into an offensive rhythm now, going into the playoffs, it's just not going to be a good look for them. And this isn't the only this isn't the only team that um, got upset tonight. Both of the teams in the West that previously held a top two spot both lost to um, bottom feeders on um, res- respectfully bottom feeders. Like they aren't necessarily at the um, the teams that they lost to. Like they're playing teams, but they aren't great teams. No disrespect to them whatsoever. Let me go ahead and elaborate on some of these games. So the Oklahoma City Thunder recently lost to the Utah Jazz. And it's a good thing that I mentioned Laurie Markkinen in the previous podcast when I did. And he's been criminally underrated, as I mentioned before. He ended the game with 33-11. and 11. I told you he was underrated. So this game was very close up until the end. Uh, but Oklahoma City just couldn't hold on for the win um, as Utah upset them and surprised them with this great performance coming in from everybody ar- from all around. Shy didn't score... 31 this game. He had 28 this time. Jalen Williams had 26, and Chet had 22. The starters definitely outplayed the Utah Jazz starters as a whole, but it was the bench that was the deciding factor for the Utah Jazz. I'm just pulling up the box scores right now. If the box scores would load, this Wi-Fi is absolutely terrible. Um, All right, here we go. They finally load. The bench had... um, Two other players, three other players in double figures. Um, let me just, Keontae George ended with 16. Jordan Clarkson ended with 12. And Kelly Olynyk ended with 10. Kelly Olynyk was very vital to them in the fourth quarter of this game. And obviously, um, oh, John Collins ended the game with 22 points. I forgot to mention that. But obviously the performance of Laurie Markkinen scoring 33 points was the driving force in how Utah ultimately outplayed um, the the Oklahoma City Thunder, but definitely their bench had something to do with it. The bench um, for Oklahoma City, while there are a lot of people that come off the bench, they don't necessarily produce all that much. They had two players come off the bench that ended up getting zero points, and they played well over 10 minutes. So not much production coming from them. And this per- losing to the Jazz... If you are the um, the Thunder, it's not ideal. They have wins, like, the Thunder have wins against great teams, like the Nuggets, um, the, the Wolves. They've beaten all of these teams, but they also have really questionable losses to the Chaz and to even the Pistons. They lost to the Pistons. And, like, other teams that just aren't competing in this team. Losing to the Pistons now is a serious, serious problem. You can't lose to the Pistons. They are bad. They're terrible for a reason. You can't lose to the Pistons. No disrespect to the Pistons players. They are great, but it's just they have not been able to figure it out whatsoever, and they're fighting for that number one pick. We'll see if they can get it. I'm not sure they're going to get it, given how it's Detroit and how bad luck works. But Given, let's talk about, let's continue with OKC. This is a really big problem. A serious, serious problem. Losing to bad teams, but like beating good teams. It's inconsistent. And teams that lack consistency are teams that I'm afraid of going into the postseason. And that's what's, uh, that I was wrong about this um, OKC team. I didn't think that they were going to, like, I thought they were going to make a lot of noise in the postseason, but given these losses to some of these bottom-feeding teams, I don't think they're going to make that much noise at all. I could see them losing in the first round, depending on who they match up against. Like, if they match up against Phoenix in the first round, I could see them losing that series. And, or even a team like the Pelicans, I could see them losing to them. But I digress. The other team that ended up losing today was um, last night, pardon me, was Minnesota. They lost to the Chicago Bulls. Now, this game was a bit closer, and everybody on the Wolves was producing offensively. It's just the defense wasn't there for them tonight. Kobe White, I haven't talked about him much on this podcast, another very underrated player. 
Um, and he's now getting known for like um, his performance, and he's getting much more notoriety from the media now. He ended the game with 33 points. DeMar also ended with 33 points. And Vucevic ended with 24. Drummond ended with 16 and 16. <laughs> Drummond is so odd to me because he always can put up these big numbers while at the same time not having that much of an impact on the game. However, these numbers are great. The numbers are great. It's just the impact... Not, not all that, not all there. It's a common problem. And a common problem with both of these teams is, shockingly, the defense. Like, all of these teams, the defense of each of these teams is a bit shaky. I mentioned the Bucks earlier in losing to um, Phoenix Suns. The Bucks have a very hard time guarding the pick and roll. And I also noticed they have a very difficult time switching. Like, they have a very good time. They have a very difficult time um, deciding who should be guarding who and like who's should be running out to the open man. And that's something that is like very integral to a team when you're going up against a team that has a lot of three point shooters. You have to be mindful and you have to be ready to switch and you have to be ready to go play pickup. And with a team like Phoenix and how dangerous they are, if you leave if you leave any of them open, they are going to punish you. Grayson Allen will punish you. Kevin Durant will punish you. Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Nurkic, um, Eric Gordon, all of those players will punish you from three. So you absolutely cannot let up on the three, and you have to be ready to switch. You have to be active. And the teams have great rim protection. Like all the teams that I just mentioned earlier, the Timberwolves, they have Rudy Gobert. Um, the, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they have Chet Holmgren. And with the Bucks, they have Giannis and uh, Brook Lopez. So with this in mind, a lot of teams are going to try to deviate from the paint and try to score via the three-point shot. Because of the length of Rudy Gobert and the length of Chet Holmgren, it's going to affect a lot of players going up with shots in the paint. So to, re to remedy that, they have to try and take a bunch of threes. So with that in mind... The players need to be much more active on the defensive side of the ball. They can't be lazy. You cannot afford to be lazy when you are going up against teams like this with how heavy they are and how much they're going to focus on the three-pointer. Cannot let up on the three. And that's sort of been, like, a big problem with um, a lot of these teams. And, like, a lot of the reason why they end up losing is because the teams, like, that they go up against just end up scoring, like, ridiculous amounts. They end up scoring way more than they need to. Like... The Utah Jazz, they shot 14 of 35 from three. The fact that they were getting 35 shots from out there, like 35 open shots and 35 good looks, shouldn't happen. And the Bucks' late game against Phoenix, I noticed that they were leaving several people open from three. And the, Bucks, the, the Phoenix Suns didn't even shoot that well from three. They only went eight for 28, and they still ended up winning. So the fact that they were shooting eight of 28 from the field shows that, like, their defense needs to, like, improve around, like, within the paint. Or, like, not within the paint, but within the three-point line because of the mid-range shooters that um, Phoenix Suns have. So, might be a different story when going up against Phoenix because of, like, the difficult shot makers that they have on the team. But the most of the time, they're going to be looking for shots in the paint and they're going to be looking for three-pointers. And with the Chicago Bulls, Again, another team that shot relatively efficient from three. 12 of 30. The three-pointer, like, it needs to be guarded when you have rim protection. The rotation, it has to be there. And it's very, very difficult with um, somebody, like, with players, like, as tall as Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. Like, the rotation from both of those players is going to be a little bit difficult given with how they can't necessarily move their feet quick enough to get to that player outside on the perimeter or get to that player out in the corner, especially when Rudy Gobert's focus is trying to defend the paint and cause disruptions with his length, putting his hands up, all that kind of stuff. So with this in mind, and like the teams just really have to focus on defensive rotations, especially the Bucks. The Bucks, especially. Their pick and roll defense is horrible. It is absolutely terrible. I mentioned earlier um, in a previous podcast that their defense needed a lot of work. I will go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and explain a little bit more with the time that I have. So again, what the Bucks do is they like to drop 
on the screens. So they let Brook Lopez drop on the screens, and because they let Brook Lopez drop, a lot of the players out on the perimeter leave open threes available. Like, the player can just come off the screen and just pull up. And that is a shot that um, a lot of players can hit now with how talented this, um, this league is. So they have to get rid of that shot while at the same time being able to defend the paint if the, pick and, if the, the player setting the pick decides to roll. Now, that requires a lot of communication and a lot of rotation that it doesn't seem like this team is willing to do or can do as of right now. We have to see how Doc Rivers um, continues to be the coach, how he, does, how he adjusts to this new lineup and how he coaches this team. But I personally think that they need to get much better at the rotations and they have to stop letting up on these three-pointers because that is what's killing them. That is what is ruining this team, the just letting up on three-pointers. Same thing for um, a lot of these, uh, same thing for OKC. When they lost to the Pistons, they were just giving the Pistons a lot of easy looks. Like, they were lazy. And you can't afford to be lazy when, um, when you're in the playoffs. That's going to hurt them. So maybe, that, maybe that'll change because, like, we're still not in, we still haven't reached the All-Star game. We still haven't reached All-Star break. They still have room to change, but the change has to happen now. It really does have to happen now for the Bucks And the OKC, Oklahoma City Thunder, I don't really see them doing much. I don't really see them making that much noise in the postseason. But we'll see going on. Like, Shai Gilgis Alexander, he's second in MVP voting. So maybe I'm just blowing, maybe I'm just being a little too harsh on this Thunder team. Same with, the, um, with this Minnesota team. They have a great team. They need to be able to do this in the playoffs. They need to be able to... Um, show a lot more energy and show a lot more drive and show a lot more maturity because that's the problem with this Timberwolves team and that's the problem that Jimmy Butler had with this Timberwolves team. It was the maturity. Like, nobody was mature on that roster. So, with that, we are out of time uh, for um, with this podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show. Leave a positive review. Um, it really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram uh, for more content and updates. Thank you once again. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, have a wonderful day and take care.